come under? What's up? One of my favorite books is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, written by Douglas Adams. And in this book, there is a quote that expressed quite elegantly a thought that I always carry with me. At one point, one, one character says to another, isn't it enough to see that a garden is beautiful without having to believe that there are fairies at the bottom of it too. And this quote has to do with the idea that nature itself is fascinating and mysterious enough to inspire us. And there's one particular natural phenomenon that it's unbelievably bizarre. It belongs to the realm of quantum physics and it's called quantum mechanics, I'm sorry, sorry, quantum entanglement. And, I'm, and if you don't know what that is, I'm going to explain to you the way I understand it. There's a way of connecting two particles, making them entangled in a way, even if they are apart from each other. Like you could draw something using one of the particles, and the other one would replicate the exact same drawing at the same time. And get this, even if they are millions of light years apart, like each one in a different galaxy. And that is so, so weird that Albert Einstein called that a spooky action at a distance. I want to try something because I can't fathom the reality of this. And I suspect no human being could really experience such an amazing feat of our nature. So I want to try something that can resemble this and maybe take us closer to the feeling of astonishment of an event like that. So I shuffled the blue cards and I put it on put them on the box, okay, so nobody can touch that until the end. And I shuffle the red one, but I want you to help me. What I want you to do is, I want you to mix these cards like cutting the deck like this. But you're gonna do that below the counter, right? And whenever you stop, you don't look at the cards, okay, you do it below the counter. Whenever you stop, okay, you pick up the top card, you turn it face up, and you bury it in the middle of the deck. You close everything and you bring the deck to the top counter like this, okay? Face down. Was I clear? Okay, yes. So you can do that. You love the counter piece. Mm -hmm. You cut as many times as you want. You can cut two, three times, four times. It's, it's up to you. Ready? Yes. You can take the card. You can put the card. Oh, that's perfect. It's nice. Well, let's imagine for a moment that these two decks of cards are, were made from the same sheet of paper, okay? It was cut and the cards were printed in different locations, okay? Let's imagine that they are connected some, somehow, like the particles that make the paper were entangled in some way. It seems that it happened. So, same way as yours. And if these cards are entangled, when you turn one card, that's what we should expect the same card. <laughs> okay, but that's just one card, right? But let me tell you about one of the most strange things about playing cards. It's virtually impossible to shuffle two decks of cards and they end up being in the same order due to a mathematical rule called factorial. Because a deck of cards has 52 playing cards, you could do one shuffle per second for 10 billion years and never repeat an order. Well, I shuffle the blue cards put them on the box, you shuffle the red ones, and when you turned one card, a card was turned over here, right? But if the cards were really entangled, that shouldn't be enough. When you shuffled your cards, you also shuffled mine. If, and if that's true, every single card should be in the exact same order. And I mean it. You could look to the whole deck and you'll see that every card is on the same order. 
two, the five, the six, the queens, ten, ace, nine, every single one. 